Everyone has an image of what a great leader looks like. But often people have wrong notions about leadership. The question is, what is the right way of doing leadership? What makes a leader great? In this summary, you'll learn the answers to such questions and bust your myths about leadership. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Lesson number one, leadership is all about increasing your influence. If you ask what does leadership mean, you may find various definitions. But the basic definition of leadership is influencing people and helping them grow. Often people think of leadership as a top position. They think that if they get a top position in a company, they'll become a leader. But they couldn't be further from the truth. Position or title has nothing to do with true leadership. Even an employee can be a leader if he learns this simple fact that anyone can influence others. Now you may ask, how can I gain experience of leadership if I'm not a top leader? A leader doesn't have to be a top official in a company. This mindset, that you need to be a leader to practice leadership, is stopping you from becoming a leader. Leadership can be practiced anywhere, regardless of your position. A leader is simply anyone who can influence other people and lift them up. We get most our ideas about leadership from movies. You might have seen in the movies, that a leader dresses in professional business attire, and everybody respects him. All people do exactly what the leader says. Yes, a true leader can indeed influence people to do stuff. But you have to understand that true leadership is not about establishing control. It's about influencing people so that they grow. You may be a CEO or a top person in a company, but you can't be a true leader unless you have the skills of a leader. What are those skills? Skills like the ability to understand and influence people, self-management, etc. All such skills are necessary for becoming a leader. A top position can't give you all that. In fact, if a leader lacks the necessary skills, he won't be able to handle the pressure that comes while being on the top. It will make him unworthy of his position. And he'll struggle to sustain his influence. Lesson number two. People don't follow you when you get a top position, they follow when you become a leader. The author says that most people give up on leadership because they see no options. When they find that they are not in a top position and it's extremely hard to reach there, they give up. It's not a good thing. Because they could practice leadership right from their current position. They didn't need to reach the top. The author has smartly named this book the 360 degree leader, which means that you can practice leadership from any position and in any direction. Yes, it's true that at some point, you'll want to climb the ladder. But it's not compulsory. You may start enjoying your current position more than the top position. That's because not every position suits everyone. Lesson number three, as you climb the ladder in a company, your responsibilities increase. The author says that the top position doesn't feel like what most people think. People think that leaders enjoy a lot of freedom and power. They think the leader's life must be amazing as they have lots of people working under them. Being a leader isn't easy as most people think. A leader has a lot of pressure of responsibilities. As people at the bottom have fewer responsibilities, they have more freedom. I'm not saying that they can do whatever they want. The point is, as you climb the ladder, the weight of responsibilities on your shoulder also increases, compared to when you are at the bottom of the ladder. Leaders don't enjoy a glamorous life and relax on the beach all day. You have to do a lot of work and bear all the responsibilities as a leader. Yes, there is no doubt that the leaders get paid more. But they also do the heavy work. If your only motivation is that after becoming a leader you won't have much work to do, I want you to think again. A leader's life is not as easy as it seems. Lesson number four, leadership is not about selfish gains it's about helping others grow. Most people look up to leaders because they feel that once they get on top, they will be able to exercise control and have lots of power and money. For most people, their only motivation is to fulfill their selfish desires. Frankly speaking, if you are trying to become a leader to only benefit yourself, you are not a great leader. When you look at most organizations, people are competing with each other like hungry wolves fighting for a meal. This is not leadership. A true leader is not selfish. He first thinks about others but also keeps growing himself. There is nothing wrong to think about your personal gain. But at the same time, if you are not helping others achieve their goals as a leader, you are not a great leader. Leadership is like a team sport. Every player has to work towards a common goal. Imagine a player starts thinking about scoring a goal only by himself, do you think that team will win the game? 
Of course not, it's a team sport. All the players have to coordinate with each other. Lesson number five, the best way to succeed is to create more great leaders in the middle of the organization. When you practice 360 degree leadership, there is room for a lot of growth. Usually any organization has a few leaders at the top and the rest are followers. The best idea is to have multiple leaders in the middle. Leaders in the middle can influence both upwards and downwards. They are not only influential to the people at the bottom, but they can also influence the people at the top. So you see, this is a perfect position to be in if you really want to make an impact. In most organizations, the people at the top aren't in harmony with the people at the bottom. Because people at the bottom of the organization feel that their requirements aren't being fulfilled. They don't feel like they are understood. But when you increase the number of leaders in the middle, they are closer to the people at the bottom. There is a high probability that the communication will flow more smoothly in that case. Lesson number six, if you want to become a great leader, learn to deal with the stress. Yes, a leader's life can be stressful. You have to manage the people under you. And at the same time, you have to handle the issue with the people on the top. Especially if you are a new leader, nobody will trust you. People at the same level as yours might feel that you don't deserve your position. Sometimes, leaders have personal issues too. Just because someone is a leader doesn't mean that he doesn't have other problems in life. Things will not happen according to you always. A leader has to learn how to deal with stress. Stress management is a skill that can help you deal with stress and keep your cool. Lesson number seven, a selfish and incompetent leader hurts the growth of the organization. So far we have discussed why a leader must have enough skills to help the organization succeed as a whole. But the opposite is also true, when we look at reality, we find that there are lots of incompetent leaders. They not only harm the growth of the organization but also limit other leaders from growing. The author says that most incompetent leaders project their insecurities on others. Such self-centered leaders make decisions to benefit themselves not the organization. Put simply, they don't give a damn about the growth of others. Such leaders often become a bottleneck in the growth of all. Well, in an ideal case the other leaders should get rid of such incompetent leaders. But in reality, you have to work alongside them. You won't have full control over the organization. The author shares a few solutions to deal with this issue. For instance, you can find and help the incompetent leader grow by helping him grow his strengths and work on his weaknesses. You can also provide helpful resources to the incompetent leaders so that they study them and improve by working on their weaknesses. The author recommends that, in the worst case, you should change jobs. But I don't think it's going to help you. Because no company or organization is perfect. Lesson number eight, learn to appreciate your current position. There is an old adage that the grass is always greener on the other side. The author talks about how most leaders don't appreciate their current position. If you are doing a job, you know what I'm trying to say here. It's not just in the job. Most people don't appreciate their gifts in life. We often keep complaining about the things we don't have. It's not bad to have dreams. But it's not good to not appreciate what you already have. Don't you think we should appreciate our current life no matter how good or bad it is right now? Why do most leaders don't appreciate their current position? Because they think that they are missing out on many things, and they believe that they need to rise up to the higher ranks, only then they will become happy. Such a mindset can become a block in your path to becoming a great leader. This is a scarcity mindset. It stops you from making the most of your potential. The solution is simple, you have to appreciate what you already have. Since we are talking about leadership, you have to see your current position as a launch pad to your success. Instead of complaining, you must find out ways to contribute. We have already discussed how leadership can be practiced at any level with the right mindset, haven't we? Lesson number 9. Leaders are like icebergs. When we look at the iceberg, we only see the tip above. But deep down there is so much that is not visible on the surface. Similarly, leaders appear as if their life is full of freedom and power. But we never realize the effort they put to get there to their current position. The author discusses how people approach him after the presentation and appreciate his current job as he appears to be doing what he loves. It's the same thing we do when we look at any successful person. We only look at the achievements and ignore failures. We don't see the full picture. We only see the tip of the iceberg. 
As a result, we imagine that leadership must be easy once you hold a top position. All great leaders have a common habit. They read books. That's why I highly recommend you purchase this book and read it. Link is in the description below. By the way, do you know that great leaders always eat last? Watch the book Summary of Leaders Eat Last by Simon Sinek to learn more.